Hey YouTube friends, today I want to talk to you about something that you might find kind of gross. My husband thinks I've gone crazy. My mom and dad, they think I've gone crazy too, but I'm not going to be without. So it was just a short time ago, if you've all forgotten, that there was a total run in panic buying at all the big supermarkets for, you know, it wasn't food, it was, you guessed it, toilet paper. So do you remember when Costco was out of these babies? Yeah, that's right. What we thought was just normal to go and buy, we had nothing. So if you were without and didn't have a stockpile like you were supposed to have as a prepper or homesteader, what was it left for you to do? But there's lots of reasons to go this way. It's not just because there might be shortages. It's because as a homesteader, you want to be self-sufficient. And also there's other reasons. There's hygiene reasons. For myself, I'm completely allergic to perfumes and dyes. So that leaves you with the choice of buying organic toilet paper. For most of us, it's very, very expensive. And if you've read how they make organic toilet paper, you won't support it because it uses so many resources that it's truly environmentally unfriendly. So whether you think I'm crazy or not, this is a really good thing to know as a homesteader. What to do if we run out of toilet paper again, or maybe you just want to go paper-free in your household. I've made a choice to use paper-free for the number one issue. Number two, we're still using toilet paper. And you know, if my guests come over, we always have toilet paper. So this is a personal choice, but it's also a great thing to get in the habit of doing. So unlike Doug and Stacy, we don't poop in a bucket. We have solar powered well water. So it's never gonna go out. We also run a septic system. The key point with that is, is that you're always self-sufficient. But a good part of cutting down your waste is you won't be putting so much toilet paper into your septic system. So to start with, what you're gonna need is some old 100% cotton t-shirts or flannel. I choose flannel. So you can find an old flannel sheet. You can use flannel shirts and I'm going to show you how to cut them up. So we, before we go into the details, I want to share with you that if you think I'm crazy, we didn't actually get toilet paper until the mid 1800s. So for thousands of years, people were not using toilet paper. This was relatively a new thing. People use corn husk, they use leaves, they use weeds, whatever they could find. And even though there was disposable diapers when my daughter went through potty training and was a baby, I used cloth. I still have a whole stack of these cloth diapers and we use these for window washing. They have never ever worn out. She would kill me if she heard me talk about this on on YouTube, but here she is, she's 26, and these still are existing in my household. So it's all about training. So 26 years ago, I trained myself to wash baby diapers. So why can't I do that now for myself with number one? So remember, I'm not really doing this to save the environment. What I'm doing this for is to be self-sufficient. So what you're gonna need to do this is some flannel or t-shirts. You're going to need a bucket of sorts with a lid. You're also going to need vinegar and I choose lavender essential oil and a sp sprayer. So the first thing I wanted to show you is I've collected over time lots of different scraps of fabric and every time there's a shirt that wears out or a sheet or anything like that I just throw it to the side in my fabric pile. I've already gone up and none of these are perfectly symmetrical, but I've gone ahead and cut them into rectangular squares. These are fine if you're just using them for number one. Now, if you choose to go all the way and use them for number two or in a situation where there is no toilet paper, you probably want them to be twice as big. But you can see these aren't perfect but they're quite adequate. So I've gone, I've gone ahead and already cut these. Here I have a pretty nice little stack 
the flannel. Now I have other colors here, but you know, I would probably choose to use some of the darker colors, but if all you have are lighter colors, you know, you're just gonna have to wash them more thoroughly. So once you get a cut, a stack cut like this, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on. So the next thing you're gonna wanna have is a bucket. I have found that these Folgers coffee containers are so resourceful. I use these for almost everything. They are used for my compost. We use them as chicken feeders. I measure out the cow's feed. Um, these are a great resource and we always seem to have them because, well, we drink cheap old Folgers. So if you don't like the look of this for your bathroom, you could always paint it with a paint that adhered to plastic or you could cover it with, cover it with some fabric. I don't really care. No, really, nobody really cares in my household, so this is what I'm using. So as you can see, I have a cute little basket that I actually got at a rummage room, and my Folgers container fits perfect. So this is what I'm going to do in my bathroom. I'm going to have this little basket, my Folgers container, and I'm going to go ahead and put a few little flannel squares right there. Next, we're going to need a spray. So the next thing you're going to need is a spray bottle. We're going to fill this with three parts water to one part vinegar. All right, so I've already gone ahead and put water into my container. I filled it three quarters of the way full. On the rest, I'm going to put vinegar in. I'm not doing any precise math here, you guys, but about three to one. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and add lavender oil. You can choose other scents if you prefer, but I really love the smell of lavender. So you want to put in probably about 30 drops. All right. So the idea behind the lavender water is after you use this as a wipe, you're going to throw it in your bucket and you're going to give it a couple squirts. It'll keep the smell down until you do the laundry. So take a look at this. This is actually kind of cute. There's nothing offensive if this was sitting in your guest bathroom or your bathroom for others to see. This is just a simple, simple little setup, a little bucket your spray with vinegar and lavender, and some cute little flannel towels. Now, as it goes for washing, it's a simple thing. You know, if you're only doing number one, just throw them in with your load of wash. You know, it's just me and my husband here, and so I probably do two loads of wash a week. Not a big deal, so I'm gonna go ahead and I just throw those in with my laundry. Now, if you were in a situation where you had no toilet paper and you had to use it for number one and number two, You'll probably want to do a pre-soak. You'll probably want to rinse those towels, do a pre-soak, and either add bleach, but I try not to use bleach, and I can always make my own homemade vinegars. So go ahead and add a cup of vinegar to your laundry, just like you would if you're washing your baby diapers back in the day. The other important point would be to make sure that they're dried all the way. We don't want to have any bacteria growing. So Another great way is to line dry them. Right now we're in the middle of winter, so that's not going to happen. But line drying would give them a total air dry situation, and I would really, really promote that. So whether you're in an off-grid situation and you poop them in a bucket or an outhouse, or if you're like me and you have the modern conveniences of an indoor toilet with running water and sewer for us septic and well, or if you just want to just go totally paperless and not support the man and be self-sufficient with your own resources, this is a simple way to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and come back and see me next time. Thanks for watching.